Hey, this is Jenny Jones, Digital Growth Hacks Club. Hey, listen, had a tool I want to put in front of you. It's been out for a little bit. Um, I've had it for about a year and a half. I wanted to do a quick versus breakdown on it. If this is your first time to this channel, please go ahead and like and subscribe. I'm always doing these different comparisons, the different verses, just looking at software tools and apps to try to help you increase your bottom line and to see how they work in your own ecosystem and our business. All right, so listen. Um, there's this tool it's out called Linguix, right? And again, like I said, I had them for about a year and a half. And one of the things I wanted to do was just do a simple comparison, right? This is a paragraph that I wrote. I'm trying to write an intro to a blog and I just wanted to compare. I didn't want to get into do anything real long and lengthy, but I just wanted to write a simple paragraph. And this one basically is retirement at age 40, right? I do a lot of podcast, do a lot of uh, different blog posts and things of that nature. But I wanted to do this one here and I just wrote a simple um, paragraph here. But what I also did was I wanted to compare it, obviously, because this tool is compared to Grammarly. And I also wrote the same paragraph in Grammarly. And I'm going to show you what that does, uh, how that looks in a few minutes here. So what you get is you load it up and you just get an editor right? You get an editor here. Um, right here gives you the statistics, right? 84 words, six sentences, reading time, 24 seconds, speaking time, 39 seconds, so on and so forth. So it says your text is fairly easy to read and gives you the character count. Okay. So you can also personalize what you want to do. Hey, I mostly write about business, education, family, and friends. My English level is elementary, immediate, and or advanced. Then you can just, those are just some of the changes you can make and then this exports it out to PDF. And then you're on your way. And so what'll, what'll happen is you go through here and you're able to identify. All right, so that's Grammarly coming on. So let me just cut this off. Um, so Grammarly, it's funny because Grammarly is in my, uh, it's obviously um, one of the extensions that I have on. So Grammarly, uh, Grammarly is identified all right, some of the things here, and then they've, Dave have its, um, Linguist has identified them as well. So let me show you what happens here. So let me just take this off. So let me just put dismiss here. Uh, let me put uh, dismiss here. I had it turned off, but can't believe it did that. Came back on, Grammarly wants to just take over. Right, and so this is what it has without Grammarly. So Grammarly came, uh, in as a backup basically because I have it as part of my extension, but I'm just trying to write a simple um, paragraph here. So sure, it identifies what they are. This is um, hypothetical, right? Uh, transpose that. So it found, it found one, two, three, four, five error messages, uh, errors, right? And so let me look at Grammarly. Let me tell you what we have here. So what we found in Grammarly using the same paragraph, we found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight error messages. And they're not only error messages; these are suggestions. So it not only gives you um, different um, error messages, but it also makes suggestions as well. And it, not, it gives you the suggestions, but it also give and tells you the reason why hey does this not appear to agree with the plural subject some pressing questions right and it gives you correctness seven gives you overall score of 59 here is it very engaging yes delivery just right and gives you these extra things here and so again this is grammarly pro and then this is language pro so let's let's go here let's correct and see what we got here let's look at our score gives us a score of 74 here for readability but over here it gives us a 59 score for overall. So let's go ahead and do the quick correction on them and then let's let's um, wrap up the video. So this is have, so we'll change it to have, right? And we'll change this to, uh, this is still that. That gave us I will. It didn't even correct that for us. And this is age um, and then old age here. So we'll change that to old age. So now it's telling us now because it had three error messages. Now it's saying it's good to go. Let's look at the stats here. 
stats are still 73, right? As a readability. Let's go and correct Grammarly, see how that did. This is have, we start out with a 59. We change that to have, we change this to weather will, right? I don't know what that's about. Oh, I will change that, whether I will. Change that to age, took the question mark out. Old age gave us the same correction there. Gave us our correction on hypothetical. And it made a comma there, right? And then here it says, own may be redundant, right? And one should seek, uh, should consult or seek out their own advice. Own may be redundant. So we'll remove that. Then personal here, personal may be redundant. So remove that here. We take that out, out there. So this is recalculating. This is giving us correctness, check, clarity check, engagement check, delivery check. So it reads a little bit different. Please keep in mind that all the numbers here are hypothetical and one should consult or seek advice from their advisors. Let's look at the last paragraph here. Please keep in mind that all of the numbers here are hypothetical and one should consult or seek out their own advice from their personal advisors. So again, it, it went for this one, I think was a little too verbose, reverse verbose, meaning just adding a little fluffiness to it and just took it out. It says, hey, you don't really need that. It was too redundant. And then this one just kind of just gave us the corrections. It's really, to me, it just really appears to be a good grammatical tool. Try to make sure that you don't um, uh, spell things that are out of line. To me, that's more or less what uh, a Word, Microsoft Word or something will do. That's the simple method of it. But when you're making recommendations on how to get the correctness, the clarity and engagement together, and then you can adjust the goals here overall and what it is you're looking for, I think um, this serves a purpose. But if you wanted to look at it now, I mean, Again, Linguids, they have a lifetime deal just in case if you wanted to get your own um, tool like this. They do have a lifetime deal, which is fairly inexpensive. I think it's either 49 or 69 bucks one time cost. You can get that. And I, I will sometimes use different tools like actually not sometimes I use those a lot when I'm after I do. I'll take paragraphs and I'll drop them in and I will do. Um, quick checks against some of my blogs, things of that nature, make sure that they're they're correcting outright. So again, this has been Jenny Jones. Hey, if you want a deeper dive, you can always find us over uh, at uh, SAS Use Case TV, where we're always taking a deeper dive in tools, looking underneath the hood, mixing them with other tools and trying to see what kind of result that we get. All right. This has been Jenny Jones. You guys take care. Goodbye for now.